Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry Virtual Tabletop and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Ripper recently updated the particle system for 3D Canvas, completely overhauling it and adding these phenomenal new special effects. And you can check out Swift's video where he covers it being used for lights such as this in 3D Canvas. It's a really cool new system. And not only can we use it for these ambient particle effects within our scenes, we can also take it and use it with automated animations. And so that's what we're gonna be doing here today is we're gonna be going through the combat capabilities of these new particle systems. So to get started, we're going to need 3D Canvas since we're working in 3D, and you'll wanna make sure that you're on the latest version, which as of this recording is version 5.0.12. And of course, you'll need the latest version of automated animations, which as of this recording is version 4.2.51. You'll also need Sequencer, which is a dependency for both of these modules. As a reminder, if you're a BaileyWiki advanced tier patron or above, you have access to 3D Canvas through our Patreon. And an important note here, we're going to be going into some things with automated animations. However, this is not going to be a full automated animation tutorial or a full 3D Canvas tutorial. Instead, this is gonna be mostly a slight review and a roundup of all of the great new particle effects. So if you need to brush up on automated animations, check out our previous videos on the subject linked on screen now. As a review, to edit the global settings for automated animations, there's two ways to get there. The first is through configure settings, and then automated animations has a launch menu, and that takes you straight to the global recognition menu. Alternatively, you can open up a character sheet and edit one of the items in their spellbook or features and click on this AA button. Then up at the very top, there is a blue text that will open the global recognition menu. Once we're in the global recognition menu, there are three principal categories that we need to worry about, melee, range, and on token. All of these have 3D effects on them. The rest you can safely ignore, or if you want to use those for 2D, you can go ahead and customize them. And if you want to learn more about automated animations for 2D, check out our first automated animations video that's linked on the screen right now. I'm going to go into range so that we can adjust one of these spells on this mage here. And I can also show you some of the new things that have been added. So as a review, when you click on 3D Canvas, this is how you're going to actually edit the 3D versions of these effects. And there are a lot of different options. So first off, we have to have this marked as enabled, which all of these should have that by default. And then you have the type. There are a whole lot of different types. In general, if you're working with range, do you want to stick with either projectiles or rays? or you might want to throw in directional. Save explosions and on target for either on token effects or the explosion add-on. Then our very first option is gonna be the sprite. And when you use these different effects, usually the sprite is going to be layered multiple times. And that is going to kind of give you the image here. That's not the case with runic shot, so we're gonna switch over to a different projectile and then we cast Firebolt. You can see there are these little embers that are falling off of it. So if we change the sprite, that's going to affect that. In terms of changing sprites, there are a lot already included in the 3D Canvas directory here. This is where you're going to default open up to, and you can use this to change the shape and look of these different pieces. I'm using Ripper's File Picker Plus, which has given me the preview icons in that top left corner there. This is particularly helpful for on some of these effects where we will use 3D objects. So instead of WebPs or PNGs, we're gonna actually use 3D models and it gives us a nice preview up to the top left. He's also included some WebPs just to show you a quick preview of what it looks like, but it's helpful to be able to see the model itself as well. You can of course change colors. And then we have a lot of different options. I'm not gonna demonstrate the difference between all of these settings right now. You can check out our previous video on the subject if you wanna see them kind of in depth. We're just gonna do a quick review. 
So speed is the rate at which the effects occur. So for this, it would kind of be travel speed on the projectile to and from. Repeat is the number of times this is going to go off. So it will repeat the whole projectile as many times as you have this number specified. Delay is how long to wait between any starting animations or any repetitions. If you use repeat and you wanna make sure that all these bolts fire at the same time and you don't repeat token animations, you'll wanna manually set your delay to zero. Scale and emitter size are both linked to this new feature, which is auto sizing. And this should work for most of these different effects and most of these different particle sizes. But it's going to kind of intelligently change the emitter size and scale to look the best with this particular preset. It doesn't always work for certain spells or certain effects here. So you may want to turn auto size off and adjust these. If you do, you can think of scale as how large should the individual particles be? So how large do you want your sprite to be? And the emitter size you can think of as being what's the area that it's filling. Kind of similar to when we have the lighting system on and we have it filled with particles. It's do we want it to fill up the entire size of the light area or a smaller version of that? So emitter size is how you can kind of change the total area that's affected. But again, that's usually gonna be handled by auto size. You can turn that off if you wanna adjust these. And there are some of these different effects that you will want to adjust. Arc is how many times it's going to shift in between moving to the target. Alpha is how opaque or transparent the individual particles are. So if you make it one, it's gonna be completely opaque and hard to see through. And if you make it zero, it's going to be invisible. You may want to turn this up if you're using one of the new effects that has physical objects to it. Gravity is going to be how these particles drift. Are they going to fall downwards or rise upwards? Or if you have it at zero, they're going to kind of lazily hang in the air. Duration depends upon the different effect, but in general, it's going to be how long are you waiting before you're applying things like explosions or end animations. Life is how long the particles linger in the air. So if you set this value really high, then the beams and particles floating in the air will stick around for a lot longer. And then rate is how fast the particles come out. And this varies from effect to effect as to whether it's going to travel faster or if it's just going to have a lot more particles. So you'll have to play around with that a little bit on each different effect. Rotate towards kind of makes the projectiles go towards the target and it changes how it moves in the air. It again varies from effect to effect, so that may be something you want to play around with. Again, we have auto size. It's gonna automatically adjust the emitter size and scale for you. And then the on center tag allows it to aim for the center of mass on your target and you won't notice this as much when you are attacking medium sized things or small things, but when you get to much larger or much smaller uh, targets, then the on center helps it look like you're actually aiming for center of mass. That's a really brief overview of all of this. And with all of these different pieces, you'll notice that when I click on these, these I've left at the default values. So I have the text bar indicating where I can start typing actually in the middle of the number instead of in front of it, whereas like on duration, I've already typed it. So it's starting on either side. These are default values that are going to be there if you have no text in. So they're placeholders. And if you ever want to revert to the default, you can simply just delete what you've typed and we'll see the placeholder text comes back. And that makes it uh, back to that default value. Note that delay functions slightly differently if you have repeats or extra token animations, and you may want to manually type in the zero in order to override some things. With all of these, you can add sounds, and there are a variety of different settings for that. For example, when you want to start, the volume and the delay, re repetitions and repeat delays, etc. Explosion is a secondary effect that's going to trigger on what you're targeting and hitting after it finishes the first part of the animation here. So by default, it's custom, but you can use a variety of different effects that we'll go through in a moment. 
you can kind of see these little embers hopping off and that is part of the explosion. Obviously you'd want to tweak that further to get it exactly how you want it. Token animation are these little effects that we're doing before and after the animations. So we have options for the source token and the target token. And there's a few different options here. And if you ever want to look at them before trying any, just right clicking on a token under the, the effects and animations here for 3D Canvas, all of these different uh, emotes really are what's going to correspond to these different types here. So you can use that as a preview. You can choose whether to play these animations at the beginning of the whole animation or at the end or both. Now let's go through some of these new effects types. We're not gonna demonstrate every single one of them as some of them are fairly similar. And I'm not gonna walk you through all of the setup process. I'm just gonna show you configurations that look good and we'll discuss some of these different abilities. So this one's not necessarily super fitting for a firebolt per se, but it works for demonstrating it. This is using the earth projectile type and then also the earth explosion. So you can see this is a cool line of rocks and the colors and sprites are actually the little bits that fly off of the rock. One thing to keep in mind here is you might want to set the speed a little low. For example, I have this at three instead of five so that it works well. And I just leave the earth explosion and tweak the colors. Next up, we have the black dart. This one is pretty much ready to go right out of the box. You can see that it has a black body on the projectile and the colors are kind of the glow around it. Next, we have one of my favorite new effects, and that is the runic shot. And whenever we go to cast this, we'll see that there is a particle in front of the mage here, and then the beam fires. And this corresponds to the sprite. So you can use any flat image like a PNG or WebP, or it also supports an animated image. For example, if you used one of the magic circles from JB2A. But note that if you do use an animated image, it's going to play the entire animation before it launches the projectile, so you may want to choose a shorter animation. For this next one, we're going to hop over to our assassin over here, and we're going to show off on crossbow, we have set up one of these next three. We have arrow, bolt, and javelin. All of these use different 3D objects for the actual effect, so you don't actually need to change the sprite or anything like that and it's going to shoot a bolt. And you'll notice that I've actually already shot Eustace the Undying a few times here. And if we continue shooting, all of these bolts are going to stick into him, and they're roughly based on where we're shooting from. So you can see that all of these stick in, and it's a really cool way to make something look like a real pincushion on the battlefield using ranged weapons. Arrow and Javelin function in pretty much the same way. So you can use all of these in combination to make those archers feel really great with all of these splashy effects going on around them. As of right now, in order to remove these, you need to either change the scene or refresh your screen. In the future, there may be an option to remove them without having to refresh or change scenes. The Magic Arrow effect functions similarly to the other arrows but this one's going to be colorable, so it's gonna reflect the colors that you use. This is perfect for if you want to have some kind of magic arrow effect like acid arrow, etc. If you use auto size, it's kind of large, so you may want to make the size smaller and then tweak the scale accordingly in order to get the exact size that you want. I kind of like the big chunky arrow, but that is up to you. Next, we have the shotgun effect. Here I have the speed slowed down so you can kind of see it's got a little bit of that classic video gamey spray look to it. You can leave the speed at the default and it comes out pretty quick and still has a nice impact, but it might be a little harder to see, kind of a blink and you miss it situation. Make sure that you have auto size turned on on this or you'll have to really play around with the scale and emitter size to get it looking nice. Next, we're on to the rays, and the runic ray is another fantastic effect where you have a sigil appear in front of your character. You can see here I'm using the animated one, and duration actually affects how long the animated asset will play on this particular one. So you can tweak that so that it lines up nicely with your effects, and you get to see the symbol for a bit before the ray goes out. So really good, clean effect. 
Next we have the Void Ray, and this is a pretty cool effect, kind of similar to the Black Dart, and it's going to be lines instead. And this has a really cool look whenever you have a lot of repeats and arcs set up. It kind of looks like a bit of black lightning, so you can get some really interesting effects by playing around with it. It's again that black body, and you just change the colors for the glow around it. And if you're doing a lot of repeats, you'll want to manually type in zero for your delay. Otherwise, it's going to repeat any token animations before each individual beam. We're going to switch over into the directional options. And I'm going to demonstrate that first with Scorching Ray using a flamethrower. We'll ignore these parry abilities. And we can see this really nice flamethrower effect that blasts into all of our targets. So for this, make sure you have auto size on, or again, you'll have to tweak the scale and emitter size quite a bit in order to have it line up exactly how you like. There's also some other great ones in here, like the electric burst. Another great directional option is the electric burst. Which works excellently for creating this great torrent of lightning going on. There is a poison cloud which is a little more gaseous here. And this is with the auto size on. You can tweak these to make it a kind of finer mist as appropriate. Looks excellent as like a breath weapon or something similar. We have the frost effect. Most of these directionals work very well right out of the box. You may want to tweak your emitter size and scale and turn off your auto size if you want to get a little more granular with it, but I think they look pretty good just by changing the colors. We have a laser beam effect, and this doesn't have as much customizability as some of these other pieces. So it just kind of shoots out a set rate, and you can really just change the colors on it, but it still has a really cool effect. Now we're going to dive into some of the explosion effects. This is a combination of, when you look through here, the explosions and on-target effects. Those are also available down here for explosion, but you can see it's a shortened list since projectiles don't quite work. I'm not gonna demonstrate all of these, just a few of the highlights so you get an idea of what to play around with. So, uh, Vortex is a really great one. When we cast Firebolt here and we have an impact, we're gonna have these bits of energy kind of fly up. So that could be really interesting for a healing spell or also if you're doing something that looks like it's sapping energy. Light is another effect that looks really great when you're adding some kind of burning sensation. And it has a slight warm up time to it and then you have a gradual increase of flame. The Tesla effect is a really good one for showing some extra electricity going on. I highly recommend having on center on, so then it will be in the center of the token. If you have on center off, it's gonna be centered on the token base or the feet of the token. So for best results, have it on center. This next effect is really awesome. It's the gravity well. However, you do have to make some pretty substantial tweaks and it might not be appropriate for a cantrip level attack here. You can see this creates this amazing gravity well effect around the target. To get it to look nice like this, you should turn off auto size and set the scale somewhat large and the emitter size needs to be substantially larger. See the default is a very small, 0 0.001, and I have it set up to five. And so that's basically gonna make it take up like this five grid square radius around the token, and that's kind of what you need to make it look nice and neat. Otherwise, some of the pieces get a little splintered and everything. The explosion effect is another really satisfying one. This is, again, a situation where you might want to have auto size turned off. With auto size on, it's a little smaller, but this way you can tweak it a little more, change your emitter size, your scale, etc. Sparks is another really fun effect, and this actually has some physics to it. I set the duration and the life pretty long so you can see it, but it has all of these little particles jumping off and they're actually bouncing off of the terrain here. So it will intelligently determine what the surface below this token is and it will bounce off of that. It can't keep bouncing off of several pieces of geometry, but it is a really convincing and cool effect for any kind of fiery spell or ability. The last explosion we're gonna show off here today is going to be lightning. This is a really satisfying one. 
and it works excellently if you're doing some kind of holy magic, or if you're calling down lightning of some sort, or even some sort of smite. Moving on to the melee types, there are swing and thrust, and then a swing thrust, which will randomize between the two. And I have this setup for a dagger. And when we swing, it's going to actually slash. I have the rotate towards selected, so it kind of looks like the slash goes directly towards Eustace here. And then I have my auto size turned off and my scale set fairly low. I found with the particular models that I'm using that I want a smaller scale than auto size gives me. For the sprite, uh, you can use some of the different things within the main 3D Canvas module, but I would highly recommend grabbing the 3D Canvas map making compendium which has a whole bunch of different free models for you to use. And most people should have this installed if you're working in 3D, but in case you don't, this is where you would go. It is inside of the Canvas 3D Compendium module. And then under RPG items, there's all kinds of different items, weapons, etc. So you could change it to be an ax or um, a mace or a sword, or you can hit someone with a treasure chest if you so choose. And that's how you would set up all of these different melee options. Also notice that we haven't talked about using spells with templates yet in 3D. Well, the reason for that is because 3D Canvas handles it itself. So if we go into our configure settings and look at 3D Canvas, and you configure the global 3D Canvas settings, there is the enable template effects. And that's going to apply shaders to templates based on the damage type. And this is somewhat of a misnomer. It says that currently only D&D 5e is supported. D&D 5e comes with some extra visual effects in the form of these particle systems that we have. So we're going to show that off in just a moment. But also if you're on Pathfinder 2e, then shaders will be applied to spell templates. So it'll look nice, kind of similar to how token magic effects works in 2d. So there is support for both of those systems, but 5e has a little bit more in the form of extra visual effects and we'll demonstrate that right now. So we cast this Cone of Cold, and I'll rotate it so it catches everybody. We'll see there's this nice frost effect here. And no template shows up because Cone of Cold doesn't actually have a duration, so 3D Canvas goes ahead and automatically deletes it. Because I'm using MIDI QOL, it does give me this little pop-up that we have ownership of the Cone of Cold template. You may want to change your workflow settings in MIDI QOL to get rid of that little pop-up if you want, or you can just ignore it because as soon as you advance the turn away from someone who has a single attack template, it will go ahead and disappear. This is all based off of damage type, and although it will automatically get rid of a template if you have a single instance of damage like Cone of Cold or Ice Storm or Fireball. If you have something like a Cloud Kill here, it's actually going to create a template with this effect on it. So if you're using Pathfinder 2E, then all of your templates are going to have a similar effect applied to it based upon the damage type and will not be automatically deleted even if they're single use um, pieces. And if you want to manipulate this, you simply select the token, the template, and you can move it around or delete it as I have just done. And then you can deal with all your concentration and everything. So that's how area of effect and template based spells work right now with 3D Canvas. Currently, these are not customizable. However, that is a feature that Ripper is working on. And so when he does come out with that feature and the ability to customize these different damage types and the effects for template spells, we will cover that in a video at that time. And that's going to conclude our coverage on the new particle effect system for 3D Canvas using automated animations to make your combats really pop. We hope that this has been helpful to you and given you a little bit of a taste of just how gorgeous these new effects are that Ripper has added. And automated animations makes it so easy to leverage these for combat to make both visually spectacular and engaging combat encounters for our players. In the future, Ripper is planning on fleshing out the presets for different types of attacks and animations in automated animations for 3D, so keep an eye out for those updates in the future, and possibly a Bailiwiki specific pack for 3D combat animations. Once again, this has been Zephyr for the Bailiwiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, 
but you also gain access to all the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including this beautiful 3D city scene that we've been on today. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.